Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Everyday Caddy for the Everyday Guy. So as you saw today, it's going to be my first vlog type video where I express my opinion about certain things. And the first thing I'm going to talk about um, in my first vlog are holsters or ease holsters. I've been getting a lot of emails about holsters over these past few days. Ever since I released my video about how to conceal, people have been, have been mailing me asking me what holster they should get, what they should look for in a holster, what my opinion is. And I try to never give a particular manufacturer because I don't want to seem biased. So I tend to just tell them what I look for in a holster and typing out like my eighth email saying the exact same thing. I thought to myself, why don't I make a video about this? So this video is going to be based on my opinion, mainly on appendix carry holsters. So let's have a look. So guys, when I do look for a holster, there are certain things I look out for above all else. And the three things are safety, comfortability, and concealment. Now those things tend to be broken down into certain aspects. I'm going to try to cover all of them. And then at the end, I'm going to talk about little personal things I like about certain holsters. When I talk about safety, one of the main things I talk about or am concerned about is the trigger guard area of the holster. Especially, well not especially, some people say especially when it comes to appendix carry. I think that is important no matter where you're carrying um, your firearm, whether it be appendix or strong side, doesn't matter. The holster should always cover the entire trigger guard. That is, that is vital and try, remember everything is an opinion on this channel, but try not to let holster manufacturers sway you on this. It's important that you can't get your finger inside the trigger no matter what kind of holster it is the trigger guard area should always be 99.9% .9 covered the reason for that well it's multi-factor one you know you can get clothing items stuck in there and when you go to the holster it gets caught up in the trigger two even when you're at the range I've been to the range in the shot and having the shell casing bounce off the sort of range panel quarter panel wall type thing and land inside my appendix holster. Now, that's not cool because there are things around your appendix area that don't respond well to heat. But the fact that that uh, happened sort of made me realize that one very vital aspect of, of holsters is that your trigger guard area be covered completely. Another thing is collapsibility or the lack of collapsibility. This is, is very important. If you have a holster, and I find this more with leather holsters, I think that's why they're slightly less popular these days. But if you're wearing appendix and your holster collapses, especially when you when, when you remove your firearm from it, this firearm is empty and safe. I'm not going to show that in every single video, um, but just you know, take my word for it, it is empty, it is safe. When you remove your firearm from the holster, for whatever reason, be it a self-defense situation, especially in a self-defense situation, think about this scenario, you know, you are in a situation where maybe somebody's been assaulted, someone's been shot, whatever the case may be, you draw your firearm in order to protect, protect yourself, the loved one, or that particular person who may be innocent, and the threat is now gone, and you have to re -holster. Tensions are going to be high, pressure on you is going to be high, you're probably going to want to either call the police, or emergency services, or administer some form of emergency uh, rescue to a victim if you are trained in that. You are more than likely going to want to re in a hurry, and if you have a collapsible holster, that presents a problem because chances are in that moment your holster has collapsed and now you have to look down and, you know, fiddle with a holster in order to get your firearm back safely into its, its home position. So a non-collapsible holster, I find that to be very important. Safety aspects, trigger guard or trigger area always covered and your holster being solid and non-collapsible. In that, in that regard, I would say Kydex is probably the better option. I don't know much about leather holsters. I don't know how much they've improved, so I don't want to say for certain. Remember, everything is an opinion, nothing is a recommendation. Hey guys, the next thing I want to talk about, and this is mainly based on appendix carry holsters, is the claw. And most importantly, the position of the claw. Now, this particular holster doesn't have a claw per se. It's got a built-in wedge that acts like the claw. But what I want to show you is that, sorry, the clip and the claw line up properly. If your claw is too high or too low, you're going to lack concealment and it's going to be uncomfortable. Here's another example. The clip and the claw line up so where your belt would come through, it goes perfectly over the claw. So that's very important. When you do look at the holster, look at the position of the claw versus the position of the clip and that's going to make concealment much easier. So guys, the next thing I want to talk to you about is retention and the adjustability there of most people 
want to be able to adjust their own retention. To some people it's not a big deal, some people like a lot of retention, other people like a little less retention. The important thing is that you can adjust it to your own personal needs. Now I'll show you what most adjustment screws look like. It's like a little sort of rubber band type situation in between the screws and you can loosen the screws and the rubber bands will stretch and that will adjust the retention of the holster. Now me personally I like um, a fair degree of looseness when it comes to retention. So this holster's retention is over there. It's this little rubber piece over there. And then there are two more rubber pieces over here and over here. I hope you can see that. I'm trying to get the best shot. That looks like the best shot of it. You can loosen these two screws as well. And then on the mag, you've got another little screw with a rubber piece on it as well. So that's where you adjust the retention on this particular holster. And I like it to be a bit loose, not so loose that it falls out of the holster, obviously, but not so tight that when I go to draw, I have to sort of yank, 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 and it all of a sudden shoots out. I don't want a situation where I'm pulling the firearm out of the holster and all of a sudden it jerks loose because then I have to adjust and compensate in that. Uh, for that with my draw stroke or in my draw stroke and I don't want to do that I want it to be very smooth before I extend so retention it's important you can set your own tension because this varies from person to person so try to go for a holster where you can adjust the retention that's just very important I think it's something that that will personalize your holster to yourself and it'll allow you to train better as well because you'll be able to make small adjustments to improve your own draw dynamic. So guys, more on concealment quickly. So a very important factor if you are gonna be carrying a holster like this that has an extra mag attachment is the curvature of the holster. So if you look at this, I'm gonna center the mag attachment parallel with the ground. Look at how aggressively the holster itself curves. I'll take everything out of it, maybe we'll get a better picture. So. The, the, the side that holds the actual fire on the holster, effectively, is virtually pointed down at the ground, okay? And what that does is it aids tremendously in concealment for many reasons. One, it curves with a natural contour of your body. And two, when you cinch your belt down, if you pull on this side, this side here, something's going to happen on this side, i.e. it's going to push outwards. Okay, now if you have a perfectly flat holster, and I'll, I'll give you an example, I don't have a perfectly flat holster, if this was effectively a holster and it had no curve in it, and you apply your belt on this side in conjunction with the clip, by pulling this side in, that's going to happen, and that is what you effectively don't want, because then you're going to have printing on this side, vice versa, if you pull your belt tight on this side over here, that's going to happen, and then it's going to print on the side of your firearm. With the curve, when you pull your belt and you tighten everything up, that happens. So you're getting excellent concealment on this side and excellent concealment on that side. And that's where the curvature of your holster is very important. Now guys, obviously if you're carrying one of these, which is a folded piece, a single folded piece of Kydex, you don't have to be too concerned about that because, because effectively what's going to happen is the clip and the claw are going to work together to pull the firearm into you and there is nothing on this side of the firearm to print. Again, that's a huge advantage of this type of holster, but you don't get the extra mag attachment as an option. Guys, another thing that does aid in concealment is your ability to adjust the cant. Now, I'm mainly covering appendix in this video and with appendix carry, you kind of want a cant of between, I'd say five and 10 degrees maximum. Now, what that means is on this clip, I'm hoping you can see, there are effectively two screws. You can loosen the one and this adjust the cant. So to put it simply, if your holster is straight, you're going to get most of your grip sticking out. Adjusting the cant slightly helps with reducing that grip printing. Another example is the holster like this where you adjust the cant by raise and lowering, raising and lowering these clips. Adjusting the cant, just, it just means your firearm is taking up less width space inside your, your, your pants. So effectively, if you look at this from this distance, year to year is longer than when I do that. Now the distance from year to year has shortened slightly. Now obviously you want to do it to a point where it's comfortable. You don't want to do it too much to a point where you're struggling. 
with your draw. But adjusting the cant, the more parallel your grip is to the ground, the more you are going to print. As the holster moves more over to your strong side, your cant has to adjust more and more to aid with, with, with printing. Guys, that is it. Thank you so much. So the important things to look out for when you are buying a holster is safety, concealment, and comfortability. The reason I put it in that order is I will not carry a holster if it's not safe. If it is safe and it conceals, I will carry it. If it's not as comfortable as another holster and it conceals very well, I may still carry that holster. I will not carry a holster at all that is not safe and comfortability won't matter to me if the holster doesn't conceal well because that is kind of also being unsafe. Remember, as concealed carriers, that word concealed is vital. If you're, if you're carrying a firearm and it becomes known, you make yourself a target and we don't want to go that route. So my holster of choice when I am carrying an extra mag is this holster. I did do reviews on all the holsters you see in this video. The, the card should have popped up somewhere in the top of the screen, either left or right. I'm never quite sure which is going to be left or right because the screen's reverse when I put it on your screen. So when I carry a holster with an extra mag, this is my holster of choice. When I don't carry an extra mag, this is my holster of choice. One maybe small thing to add that is if possible, Try to get a clip that is the same size as your belt. So if you're running a 1.5 inch belt, try to get a 1.5 inch clip. If you're running a 1.75 belt, try to get a 1.75 inch clip. That just makes it easier for the clip to grip your belt and it moves. It means it's going to move less um, when on your belt. That's it guys, my first vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's anything you'd like me to add, if there's anything you want to chat in about, do so in the comments or email me. All my details is down below. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good week. Cheers. God bless.